bring me to this venue to fish pellets versus paste. I need some advantage on you, Jim. Well, inside knowledge. And he won the draw. Better be lucky than good. I've had that one indication up to now, that's all. The, uh... And that was that was just as I lifted it up. But like I say, hopefully that shallow line's gonna come into play. As expected on the paste. They've had quite a good start, a few free bites, but they're very small fish, and if Jim's shallow line comes to life, they'll be big fish. So I have no chance if that happens, but let's see. Well, pump to one then. Not we're getting a real lot of indications on this. It's uh quite surprising because when we turned up this morning there was fish everywhere but a lot of them on the surface but like I say that paste that what mixed them in with the paste and that it, it's definitely always gets a quicker start as I say he's like say probably into his third or fourth fish already but hopefully like I say we'll get this keep feeding this short line just while we prime the shallow line So once they uh, once they come shallow, hopefully we'll catch it a lot quicker. I get asked a lot how I actually mix my paste, so it's very, very simple. I'm going to quickly show you. There's nothing, no science in it. It is very simple if you just follow this little advice. First thing, have a few bowls, obviously. Get some water. Now. Me personally, I like to put the paste into the water. I think it mixes a lot better. So pour your water into your bowl, just like so. Okay, then get whatever paste you want to use. I just use a ground bait personally. Mix up the same amount of paste into another similar bowl. So you've got the same amount now, just a little bit more water in there. So then you've got your ingredients. Then it's just a case getting your paste slowly pouring it out whilst you whisk with your finger just make sure all the powder takes on the water now it's going to look like it's no, it's ruined it's going to look like this I mean, it looks like it's absolutely ruined but give it 15 minutes and you'll probably have to put some more water in there so let's just give it a good stir around make sure every bit of particle is soaked up you can see there I mean, look at that you think that is absolutely ruined. This little blue Peter, come back in 15 minutes to see what it's like. So it's been about 15 minutes now, and let's have a little look here. And to be honest, that is perfect. I had the same amount of water, same amount of ground bait. Depends on your ground bait, you might have to just adjust it just a little bit. You might need to put more water in it. Now the thing I do, which a lot of people don't do, is now I just make it into a little ball. I'll put it into a bag. And the reason for this is, and then make little batches up. Just stick it in a bag like that. I'm not going to put it all in there, but I've put a bit just to show you what I do. Just put it into a little bag like that. Stick it in your freezer. Put it in the freezer for at least two nights. Now, the night before you actually want to use it, then take it out of the freezer. In the summer, put it into a fridge. In the, in the, in the warmer, in the colder months, sorry. Yeah, take it out and put it on the garage floor or something like that, or in the back of your car, and it'll defrost. And then what happens is when it defrosts, all those little grainy particles that I can feel now there, I can feel all the grainy particles, they will disappear and you end up with a lovely, lovely smooth paste and that's what you want for paste fishing. Hopefully them shallow fish are a lot bigger. If, if your shallow line comes to life, then I think that'll be it. I don't think it'd be long before I'm going on it, to be fair. But this paste does give you a good start though, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it does. But pellets can, sometimes can be really re can respond really well to them, but just doesn't don't seem to be as quick as what that is. So 
firstly, because this lake is predominant carp, well, that's what I've heard. Well, Mick will probably have stitched me up, but you never know. So I've got six mil pellets. Um, going to feed these on the deck short, and we're going to go shallow, because that's probably the best way I'm going to beat him with this paste. So I've got them, but my little secret bit, what I don't want him to know about, are these one mil micros for down the edge. What I've found in the, sort of in the past is two mil micros, the fish can become a bit obsessive with them. You know, so when you feed them down the edge, they don't they don't home in on your bait. So what I've got these one mil micros just softened up, just covering the water, um, just at the same level, and uh, just leave them, and they come on absolutely perfect like that, and uh, fish absolutely love them. So last of all, just got a few eight mil pellets, just if there's a few bigger fish in the lake. Got a bit of like a little bit of banoffee oil on them just to give me a little edge again. So that's it. Dead, dead simple. And hopefully we can kick his backside today. <laughs> so I like a vital part of sort of fishing pellets predominantly is lifting and dropping. Because a lot of your a lot of your sort of indications and a lot of your bites can come after the drop. So just lifting about a float's length out. And just easing it back in, hoping that something's down there watching it, sees the fort pellet falling and nails it straight away. So I'll give it a couple more minutes and then we're going to uh, gonna switch to a shallow line. That was a big line, the big went sideways. That was a better fish as well that. So that was really shallow, that better fish. So that's given me a bit of confidence now that like that shallow line might come to life quite well. So we're only about 15 minutes in and so far I've been getting quite a few bites on the pace. They're, they're small fish, but I'm getting bites where Jim started on the pellet and struggled a little bit on the inside there. But he's just now going shallow and if that goes well, yeah, that could be good. So I'm getting a few little fish here and hoping some bigger ones will turn up in a little while um i'm fishing with, it's one of my favorite methods paste i, I love doing it it's, it's one of those methods where you know you either love it or hate it really it's one of those but i'm i'm fishing quite simple rig really it's a point free float and for a change i've actually got some shot down the bottom i've been fiddling around a bit with paste and paste rigs and I think there's, there's times when you don't want no shot. When you've got big fish and they're taking it really confidently, then you don't want any shot at all. You want that hook to be going upwards. But when they're, especially when they're smaller fish, I do think a few shot, just spread four inches apart. In this case, I've actually used styles I, to prevent them moving. But the equivalent of a number, number 10 shot, just four inches apart, just three of them, four inches from the hook. The hook itself is a size 10 beast, so it's quite a big hook. But with paste, you, you, you want a big hook, you know, you've got a big bit of bait on there and you, you do want a nice size hook. Um, the line, I, I, I love the Browning hy hy Hybrid line, so I'm using that 020 uh, main line, so really robust. And I've got um, an 017 Browning Fluoro hook length on, I do like the Fluoro line. Now, whether it's invisible or not, I don't know, I, I haven't done any tests myself, I mean... I, I, but the thing I like about it is it's a stiffer line, so it gives you that stiffness that you sometimes need. And you know, confidence is a big thing in fishing, and I'm very, very confident on that Browning Fluoro line now. But the pace is, you know, as we expected, has given us an instant start. I started off on top kit plus three, and I've just come back to the top kit plus two because they are small and I'm trying to get some bites a bit quicker. I'm also feeding just an inside line as I'm fishing out, hoping maybe a few bigger fish will come down there, and if not, might be able to catch quicker. Just getting a few indications, just to start, just starting to. So it might take a while just for them to settle down on this shallow line because I've gone on it really quick. Normally, I like to give it quite a bit longer. But my pellet line on the on the short line on the deck just just won't get any bites. And uh, the one the one bite I did 
it was absolutely tiny. It just so I'm just trying to mix it up a bit while I'm just fishing out there. All I'm doing is I'm flicking it over, just sort of slapping the rig every so often. And then every so often I'm just I'm just sort of flicking it out just to make a bit more of a natural plop of the pellet. Sometimes one can be sort of work a lot better than the other. Con working in conjunction with each other can both work really well. There, so there. Uh, so finally, got one, which seems like a bigger fish. So just, I've just left that rig. To be fair, when I fired in, I've just I haven't moved it. So it definitely feels better, and it's definitely what we needed. Oh yeah, that's better. That's a better fish. Getting the, that, that stamp of fish. We're going to do all right. And, uh, it's, it's funny because, like you say, no, like pellets normally you'd expect a relatively instant response, you know, on the on the deck. But it's no way as quick as what that paste has been. But fortunately, got a fish feeding that shallow line and going on it resulted in a bigger fish. So sometimes if you don't feed and just slap the rig over, you can get like that response. Then you've got to go back to your feeding. So then just flick, flick and lay the rig in over the top. So it's definitely not fast and furious for me at the minute. Mick's still catching plenty, it seems to walk into a bigger one as well. So I'll just. I was getting quite a few little fish, so I just put on a big chunk of paste to see if I could target a bigger fish, and it, it, it's worked straight away. So I will try that again next putting because Jim's just starting to get a few shallow now, and they're going to be much better sized fish than I've been catching. I'd have to catch four times as many as him to even cap, keep up. But this is a much better fish on that bigger bit of paste. I had started on just a small bit of paste, you know, sort of thumb, fingernail size of your little finger, but now I'm going to sort of like a 50p size bit of paste now. A bit more, something for the bigger fish to sort of search out really. Just as I had that one, Jim's into another one on a shallow line, so I definitely need some more bigger fish again. One thing I do like about the paste is that you can vary the size, you know, with the size 10 hook I've got on, you can put a little tiny fingernail size piece on, or you can put a nice big chunk of like a 50 piece size. Um, you can vary it and try to target different fish. So just by varying it a little bit, I'm not having to do Huge ones, just keeping trickling like four or five pellets in at a time, not going, not going silly with bait. And we're just fishing just over, probably about 14 inches deep, including the float. So, indication, just sort of nice indication of that. Bit of a swell near the rig. Just as it's gone in like that, 
as them pellets are landing, I'm just sort of flicking it again. So because the, the shot's directly under the floor, the hook length's just sort of a bit of a more of a natural fall. So we haven't had an indication there, so we'll just give it a couple of slaps just to try and mimic the pellets going in, get the fish sort of searching for the pellet. So no, no indication, we'll give it another couple and then we'll refeed. We're just trying to, ver the, the thing about shallow fishing really is just trying to keep it varied. We're just going to keep trickling baiting. Fingers crossed this line sort of gets better as the day goes on. So while I'm doing that, I'm always putting a little bit of baiting on that short line. Just gives me a backup if I need to rest, rest this line. And then for later on, we've got an edge rig set up. We're down that right hand edge. We've got, got quite a nice depth down that edge. Do you know, it's, it's really shallow close in, but I've got probably uh, near, on a, near on a foot. So I'm just, just flicking it over. There we go, that's better. I thought we wanted to do some of that. Catty on it. Definitely got plenty of fight in it. Took it nice and confident that one. Just in just inside the mouth. I've had a pretty good start. Like this land is definitely sort of starting to pick up for me. But as as we were sort of discussing earlier, mix mixed line is, is really normally really good at the beginning. And then it has, has a bit of a lull and that gets better later on. So he's had his good good start. And it's looking like he's had having a little bit of a lull at the minute. Which is doing me a massive favour. So if I can keep just persevering with them like not catching quickly, but the fish I am catching are a lot better stamp. So I've probably got in them first four fish probably about eight pound, something like that. So I've, two of them have probably been three pound. The other one's about two, and then we've had the, the, the small fish, so it's just over eight pound in. in no time at all. We're getting in, starting to get a few indications. A lovely fighting fish carp here. So, I don't know. We're at the we're at the lovely Court Farm Fishery. That's what it is, isn't it, Mick? Court that... Farm Fishery. Court um, Farm, yeah. Lovely, lovely fishery, isn't it? Yeah. So it's in it's right near Worcester. It took me an absolute age to get here. So I come down and had a look yesterday. A couple of lakes on site. And we uh, we had a little look on the lake behind us yesterday, and there's a a match, like a, a, a bit of a match on there today. So we've ended up coming on to the this other, this second lake. Rig wise today, for my shallow rig. Right, let's go start with the main line. We've been using 018 hybrid power. Really good stuff, really strong, robust, abrasion resistant, brilliant stuff, use it all the time. So going down to the float, so this is a, a TN.3 called a Mackie. It's in line, so it's dead strong. Do you know, you, you don't want any breakages when you're fishing shallow. So what, straight underneath the float, 
I've got three number nines. The reason I've slightly undershotted it, so when the pellet sort of sits down properly, it doesn't sink the float. So going to down, going loop to loop, down to a 12 inch hook length. So I've fished this rig probably about 16 inches deep today and it's, it's, that's been the optimum depth. We're going down to the hook, sphere beast, size 16, with a hair rig band. So I've been using a 6mm pellet and these hooks are quite wide gape. So it doesn't match the hook well up with the pellet. Elastic wise, so sort I've of discussed earlier on, is the 18, sorry, 16 to 18 hybrid. Fantastic stuff. It's got loads of stretch in it and it guns up nicely for when you need to land the fish. So that one's my shallow rig. I'll, just... I'll be honest, I've used that one most of the day, but we did start on our deck rig. So elastic wise, we've gone with the 18 to 20. Didn't know what was in the lake at the start, so just went on the other side of caution. Um, main line, again, 018, hybrid power. And we're down to a 0.5 ping. Nice bodied float. Just so I've used a 6mm pellet, but it gave me the option of using an 8 and kept it nice and stable. Hook length wise, four inches, just on the deck. So we can, we've got the shot nice and close to it. So it's nice and positive. And we've also minimized hook, um, foul hookers. Shotting wise, we've got a bulk of number eights and then two number 10 droppers, all within the sort of bottom 12 inches of the rig. Hook wise, again, size 16, Sphere Beast hook, brilliant hook, just absolutely love them, and uh, perfect for the job. As Jim and I were discussing, we do think the paste really does get you off well, and you get a lot more bites on the paste, um, but I mean, it's probably not a lot between us at the moment in reality, because the fish Jim's been having are a good stamp, whereas I've been getting lots of the little stockies. So um, I've just stopped feeding four mils now, and I'm just feeding six mils, just trying to get some better fish into the peg basically and it's resulted in a sort of one of Jim's sized fish one of Jim's so let's see if that continues just a change in the feed pellets sometimes can make a huge difference well you shouldn't be feeding pellets at all <laughs> all right feed pellets well Tell you what though. Pellets versus paste. I, <laughs> I put four meals in and I'm battered by those little things. You shouldn't be feeding any. See? Fiddling. Fiddling suddenly yet again. There's not a lot between us at the moment, Jim. Pardon? There's not a lot between us. Because <laughs> those, those little fish just aren't weighing anything. What do you reckon you've got? Eight to ten pound. Yeah. Say ten. You've got about eight, haven't you? Eight pound. Yeah. Yeah, I don't miss much. <laughs> I need a lot of these little ones to get one of your fish. There we go. So it's definitely a case at the moment of quantity versus quality here, because I'm, I'm getting miles more fish than Jim, but Jim's fish are quality size. So what I've got, I've got my paste pot set quite far back on my pole tip. So as I actually push my pole out to actually put my rig out, I, I push forward a little bit just so that my rig then is at the end of the pole. So I want to be direct over that float. So just that little push out as you're feeding, as you turn that pot, will get you in the same place every time. In the nature of pace, you will miss bites. That's you know, But then every time you're missing a bite, you're feeding your peg. That's the way to get it into your head. I'm feeding my peg, I'm feeding my peg. And 
keep that in your head and keep going. And you'll get a stage where you'll hook every single fish for, you know, for quite a while. Then all of a sudden, you're not doing anything different and you'll miss every bite. That's the nature of pace fishing. If that happens, now what I normally do is start another line. It's come off that line, give it a rest. And, you, and go back on it again. And the difference can be amazing, it really can. The pace is definitely picking out those stocky fish at the moment. I have got some different coloured paste mixed up, so I've got green and natural. And sometimes I find that the natural takes a little bit longer to get a bite because the green's quite a cloudy paste. So I'm just going to try the natural now because sometimes that doesn't attract the little ones as much and normally you can get a better fish on that. Sometimes you have to wait a bit longer. I do find that on a lot of fisheries. Green always seems to be my favourite go-to paste. It just seems to work everywhere. But there's definitely times when you need a change of colour. You, you just can't catch all day on the same colour. It just doesn't happen. Um, that's very few times if it does. But at the moment, this paste is picking up these little stockies. But I'm getting lots of bites, you know. Like you said, like Mick's just been saying, look, he's catching a lot quicker than I am, but I'm having to sort of wait, but if, if the fish I've been catching have been a lot better stamp. And I've had, a, I've had four fish, and well, sorry, five fish, because the first one on the deck was just a, like a small fish. We've probably got 11 pound, 10, 11 pound now. You know, just taking it nice and nice and steady. You now, not not rushing. Ooh. Like some, what you can find sometimes is you think, oh, he's catching loads. You know, he's catching really well. Um, and you start trying to rush your peg. You know, and alter things and stuff like that. But fortunately, being so close, I can see what he's catching. I can see that like, a lot of them are smaller fish. I know he's had a few better ones, but probably very similar in weight. Yet he's he's sort of been quite active, and I'm just being being patient. Getting a few indications now. I'm just taking it really steady, you know, not not brushing, not getting giddy, trying to trying to push the peg and try and alter it because I think that would be disastrous. Um, so I've just got, got a fish there. Just come up, just right next to my float. So I'll just give the rid of a little flick without feeding any bait. We've got a decent sized fish out there, you know, two and three pound. Oh, it's a paste at the moment, I just don't know, if, when I strike into a fish it could be a three ounce carp or it could be a two pound carp. It's, you never know what you're going to get next at the moment. It's, it's quite nice like that, quite like that, you never just never know until that elastic streams out. Hopefully though, the bigger fish will come onto those six mils and I'll start getting a run of them. I love this elastic. This is the Browning 1618 hybrid elastic. It's it's just so forgiving. You can you can catch you know a little fish like three ounce fish there, or you can get five, six, seven, eight pound carping on it. It's so versatile. It's it's no one of the few elastics I can use for near enough anything. Um, it's great. If you haven't tried hybrid elastics, you really got to give them a go. The only thing I'll say is you have to lube them well, so make sure you lubricate them, especially in the hot weather. They don't like the sun much, but the benefits outweigh that. Whoop! This, one, this one's putting up a spirited fight. Yeah, it's in the net. That's my best fish so far. Just hope we can get a few more like that. 
We have got a pound on this, haven't we, Jim? We've always got a pound on. That's all right, then. I think I'll probably lose a pound later, but it's worth a it try, isn't starts it? Men starts mentioning that once, it, once he's been catching a few. <laughs> Don't mention it before that. So I'm putting about sort of six to eight six mil pellets through the pot with the paste at the moment. Getting loads that we put in. I'll see how it goes and I can over up it, stop it, change back to fours. I think I'll give it a while on this six and it, yeah, it's a few better fish coming over that. They're a good blown up six mil as well. They're it's a good size six mil pellet. I prepare them overnight as well. So I put a bit of flavouring in. Really, not really for the flavour. It's more that I want the flavouring to help the pellets sink quicker. I think with paste it's important, especially in the summer like this, that you don't want to be bringing those fish up. So a little bit extra weight on the pellet does help to get them down a little bit quicker. And you can, because they're soft-ish, you, know, you can squeeze them into a little ball as well and feed them in a little tiny ball, which again will get them down a lot quicker. Because this time of year, especially, they fish, they want to be up. So, and I'm fishing a tactic where I'm, I need to be fishing on the deck, really, unless you want to do the pace shallow, but it's not one of my favorite methods, pace shallow. Might just, what I might do in a minute is just sort of dip, deepen the rig up a little bit, just maybe move it up a couple of inches. Just to see if it's sitting slightly lower. So I've got probably about 10 inches between the the float on the float on the uh, the tip of the pole. That gives me a bit of a bit of scope to move the float up and down a little bit. I just don't seem quite settled at this depth. Even though I'm getting an odd indication where when it, they're going at the, the float, they might be just sort of sat a bit lower. Oh, do just give it a couple of inches. That's a better one, Jim. I've got a wallower. Oh, finally found a few of you. Oh, oh! Nobody likes to see. Nobody that, likes it? to see that. Could be a fowler. Is that one of the the little songs we were singing yesterday? Oh, baby, come back. Jim got into my head yesterday with that song. I think that one could have been fowler. It's a good fish though. Even if that was fowler, that was a good fish. It shows her in here, Jim. You up, mate? Sorry. So that was a good fish. It shows there's some better ones in here. Yeah. I'm starting to get some indications on the top near mine. You know, on my name is Charlotte Lake. I might have made a bit of a mistake going a bit deeper. Might need to... Shallow might have been the option. But we'll give it a, few, a minute or two, just see. An indication there. What you can find sometimes is you'll move, you'll move your rig just a little bit and you'll stop getting bites, you know, so you know you've moved out that feeding zone. We're getting, getting loads of indications, so there's, there's fish there. But I think we're well behind, we're, we're a bit behind now. Yeah, but I'm moaning that on lovely. It's what you call the morning one on the perfection. So that, just altering that rig just slightly, just to that little bit of depth, has done us a favour. So, rig wise, using an 018 main line. And because we're fishing for carp, I'm fishing an 016, 016 bottom. 
just nice robust gear and I'm also using the uh, hybrid elastic this is the 16 to 18 blue sounds really heavy but it is it's so forgiving it's lovely, lovely lovely elastic especially for this you know to just swim out your peg really nice really easy but it does power up nice you know for landing the fish relatively quickly at the moment switching to feeding the six mil pellets has had the right result my last four fish have been the better size ones whereas before i was getting the little tiny stockies by feeding four mil it's just it's surprising what a little change like that can do sometimes it's always worth trying if you sort of if you the old saying if you think it do it but it, it has been amazing the switch to the six mils at the moment the last few every fish now has been the better size ones it's either that they just came in and pushed the little fish out i mean who knows and i know that jim's tactic of fishing up in the water he will be getting the better size fish in years so i need to get them with the small ones i wouldn't be able to keep up with him i'm making sure everything's right also what i like to do is always feed before i go out try and get the fish there competing before you get out in case they're getting to where you've been feeding you just flick the rig over what i've been finding sort of, over the last the last few bites is having the rig, rig just sat there for a little while you know flick it over let it fully settle and leave it for a little bit that's when the bites have been coming we've had very few on the actual slap which at some venues you just you slap the rig over it, it and they just pretty much pull the elastic out um but here having to lift at the actual bites a bit more like f1 fishing i suppose do you know when they when you're fishing shallow for f1s and then the, the take it that certain venues they take it really really like steadily and then the other one pull the elastic out the um the carp here are, are quite finicky so just starting to pick up on that that little alteration of just going slightly deeper has definitely helped uh, nice and steady just there's no rush you know the decent fish if you can keep your pull nice and low keep the fish up in the water and then just lift up and net it nice and quick like that so that <laughs> speaking about f1s and there's meant to be very few in here that's a prime example of one like we were discussing yesterday, weren't we? The, the, the people who fish paste tend to fish it majority of the time. Yeah. You know, it's a bit of a a bit it's, of a fine art. You know, if you if you so if you like if you, if you like fishing it, it can be like quite frustrating, can't it? Oh, it at can times. be. It's a marmite tactic, isn't it? Very marmite. You yeah. love it or hate it. But I think because it, it, you've got to get things right, haven't you? You've got yeah, to you get things to. right with it. And if you if you it, do, it could annoy annoy you like no tomorrow. You're right, Jimmy. There's, there's a lot more to paste. People just think, oh, you chuck it out there, put a bit of paste on it, feed some pellets. That's that's not the case. Really isn't. Like I say, I used to, I used to sort of do it years ago, but it was sort of the venues I go to now. A lot of the time, it pellets are uh, pellets and sort of casters and maggots are so dominant. You know, paste sort of took a bit of a backseat, and I once you get out of the swing of you doing it, you never tend to do it. Yeah, do you think also that you know the pellets and casters is a quicker method because. You know, you're banding it. You're not having to rebate. Yeah, it's, 
just I'd say like it's a more like fishing pellets and fishing casters is probably a more efficient way of fishing. Yes. Because you're not having to to rebait all the time. But like you said, that that tactic at times, I know and I know a few people who fish it, it can be it can be absolutely deadly. You got one of them better ones? Yeah. On my six mil pellet. Yeah. Banded six mil pellet, Jim. Okay. Paste is, no doubt about it, a Marmite method. Um, but there is, you know, on its day, it can be unbeatable. It really can. I think one of the main reasons I love doing it, Jim, is it is a busy method, the paste. Yeah, that's probably similar to like shallow fishing with pellets. Yeah. Like a busy, a busy method. You've got to constantly feeding, constantly working your rig. Yeah. And the people that aren't, you know, that's, you've got to put the work into it you know, with any fishing. We're just going to run through the paste rigs I've been using today here at the lovely Court Farm Fishery in Worcester. Let's start off with the elastic. I've been using the 16 to 18 hybrid elastic. I think it's the same as Jim's been using looking across there. It's just such a good elastic. We just love it. It's so forgiving. You can get fish in that are small little stocky fish or to big eight pound fish just by pulling. Absolutely brilliant elastic. The main line with pace rigs, there's no messing around. 020. 020 main line. Important. A couple of back shots above the float. Very important on pace fishing. You want to be able to hold that line tight. Then I've got a little handmade float there I make myself it just takes about 0.3 of a gram no I don't actually shot them up because I don't need to most of the time my pace fishing I like to fish straight through um, a lot of the time I don't even fish um, with a hook length but today I do find sometimes that a hook length is required and today I found out that by having three number 10 just above the hook length, every four inches apart, and a small four inch hook length of 017 Browning Fluoro line. Absolutely brilliant. To a 10, size 10 beast hook. There's no messing around with paste. You've got to have a good size hook. So that's been my main rig, and I've used that majority of the day. The important bit is to have your paste float pot away from your tip really there so when you're shipping out you don't want your rig tangling up and over so have the paste pot good way down the flow the pole right the other rig is my standard exactly the same setup same elastic same line the only difference here is not a single shot down the line i do find that some days when the fish are really having it strong having no shot is better because the flow is trying to go upwards and so the hook is always trying to go up through the pace and you can hook a lot more fish some days that way the other days you need the shot you have to vary it so that's the two rigs i've been using today so my uh my shallow line is definitely starting to get better and better um probably up to around about the 40 pounds mark somewhere on there now you just they're definitely the better fish um, mix out a few it does have quite a lot of smaller fish as well um, but yeah the stamp on this shallow line are, are really good you know catch it they're like we'd say an average of about three three and a half pound probably three pound Oh yeah, they're just starting to catch really nicely now. I've, I've altered it earlier on to just slightly deeper, gone to probably between um, 16 and 18 inches deep. And I haven't had to walk the back. It's been really, really good. It's um, it just seems it seems like the, the, the right the right depth for them at the minute. Odd times I'm having to sort of just let the rig sit there for a little bit. Um, it's catching very few on the actual slap itself. But it's going pretty well. I just think that I'm maybe just starting to sort of even things up a bit. This mix had a really good run, you know. Um, but 
and things are just starting to even up a bit I think we have just got to keep it going just keep these better fish coming to the net and we've got a lovely sort of sad wind now you know like a, a bit of a breeze not playing causing me any issues sort of with a pole but that little bit of ripple just seems to have got them feeding a little bit more confidently which can happen the shallow fishing you know if you get if you get flat water it just gets a bit iffy do you know what they see the pole across the head with the uh at least with the a bit of ripple it sort of breaks it up a bit must be big so just, so just uh yeah it's going relatively well it's going as sort of we we sort of spoke about earlier um mick of, like we're paced and that you get a really like a really nice run and then it sort of eases off a little bit but i've had like the slow slow build up you know i've had, had a slowish start um probably because i went on this line too quick really normally i'd like to give it a little bit longer um but now it's starting to it's starting to feed relatively well I haven't really changed anything either I've just I've kept the same pattern going in um, get the catty out of my mouth in a minute I'd have to do that I'll end up chucking it in um, so yeah I haven't changed anything I'm just feeding four or five pellets at a time just keeping it nice and sardy, keeping it nice and well grouped. And we're getting we're getting a nice stamp fish. So we've just been fishing just over an hour and a half now. I, I had a really good start on the pace, um, sort of catching everything really. Um, a lot of little small stockies, but I was getting bites. I was quite happy about that. Um, Jim's shallow line took a little while to get going. Um, so I had a little bit of a head start on him, which was good, because I know what Jim's like on that shallow fishing. Um, I found that I kept getting little fish, just little tiny ones. So I've had to up the feed and I went to six mil pellet feeding and started off only feeding about sort of eight or ten. And um, then I've, I've now switched to feeding sort of 15 to 20 six mil pellets, which has got a lot better and it's got a lot of bigger fish. I think I'm on about... 45 pound probably it's uh, jim i think is on about 40 um ish you know um so there's not a lot between us it really isn't um and we only got a quick three and a half hour sprint so anything can happen um jim's lines definitely got stronger so what i've tried to do now is i've i've actually come a meter shorter and again it's feeding heavy with those six mil pellets because I think I need to catch a bit quicker because I'm catching everything that swims and not just getting the big ones that Jim's getting. I've got to catch quicker. Um, and I'm definitely, uh, my, my fish are getting a lot more fish, but some of them are the little sort of three ounce stockies. But it's a lovely fishery. It's the first time that we've either of us have been on this lake. So it's a good you know test for us. We're both finding our way really. Um, I have been, Another thing I've been doing, I've been feeding quite heavily a top kit plus one line just to my left. And I'm hoping, I'm going to give it a go in about another sort of 10 minutes or so. And I'm hoping that maybe that will, will be the line that I can get a lot of the good fish on and really keep up with Jim and maybe stay in front, hopefully. We'll find out, but at the moment the pace is just in front, but all to play for, really. That's all out! Oh! <laughs> well done, Jim Bob. Think it'd be tight. We'll see. We shall see. Hopefully, the quality has outdone the quantity. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been, been a fantastic day. Like I say, got, there's the quality. Mick's got the quantity. And, and he's finally done it. Yeah, he's, he's, had, he's had £144. And a few ounces, I've had 122. Um, been a fantastic day for fishing here at Court Farm. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and we'll see you on the bank sometime.